my name is John Hickman, I'm a South Norwood resident and have been so for a very long time. Always been interested in local history, um, but since I retired from my job I've become especially interested in the history of South Norwood. The one thing I discovered about South Norwood is that with South Norwood, if you scratch the surface, it bleeds history. I became involved in local conservation because there are some remarkable buildings in South Norwood. Um, and as I interviewed people, collecting oral histories, I found that they remembered the buildings and what they used to be. My idea of conservation is, is that we don't want to try and move back to what the way things were, but to use what we have to progress forward. Early in the 19th century, much of the area around here was um, being enclosed as a result of an Act of Parliament. A gentleman came together in 1805 and another Act of Parliament passed which allowed the construction of a canal from just north of New Cross Gate to West Croydon. With the canal, the road went over the canal, so the barges would lay on their backs and walk their barges to the other side of the, of, of the bridge, whereas the railway now goes over the road. So what we have here, the road has been dug out. If you walk down Portland Road, you are walking under where the canal would have been. In fact, the canal would have come just in front of us here. Jolly Sailor building dates to around the early to mid 1860s and is a much reduced site from the rather large cottage beer house that originally stood there from probably 1860-1870, maybe even earlier. In the 1870s, its name changed from the Jolly Sailor to the Royal Sailor. And that may have been because the, uh, of the second son of Queen Victoria was, um, used to take a, um, be out on the sea with a, a band and all the rest of it. I don't know. It certainly sounds better for the kind of people who lived here. I think the people on this side of the railway might not have enjoyed having the Jolly Sailor as much as a Royal Sailor in their midst. In 1845 there was a new idea and that was the atmospheric railway. The atmospheric railway worked by using the weight of the atmosphere in a pneumatic tube which pushed the carriages along. There were advantages to this because the trains didn't have to carry their own fuel. Sadly it didn't work because it couldn't be kept airtight. It was the vacuum railway. Um, there were only four of these in the world and one ran through here through South Norwood between 1845 and 47. Hello, my name's Trevor Cope, I'm the station supervisor of Norwood Junction Station and I've been here for the past 24 years. We enjoy it. We enjoy obviously meeting people, talking to people, learning, learning people's history, which is, which is quite fascinating. Learning about different cultures and how they deal and how they interact with people and that is quite interesting. My name's Judith. I've been living in South Norwood since 1969. I've been involved with a number of local associations, residents' associations with Stanley Halls, and now with We Love SE25. Started with research into a single shop, expanded because of everybody else's enthusiasm into a research into the whole of Selhurst Road, the High Street, Station Road and Portland Road, which is much more than I'd expected to expand into. One of the main things is the variety of shops that there were along here. Looking back, everything you could possibly want there were jewellers, there were opticians, there were, was, were a number of quality butchers that actually butchered meat, didn't just sell it pre-packaged. Wool shop, there was a fantastic haberdasher's shop, mention the button shop to anybody, and they go off into reams of information about things they'd made from there. Libraries came to South Norwood in late 1889, early 90, 1890. There was a boom in Croydon libraries within the entire borough. The first library in South Norwood was in the public hall in Station Road, and then the second library was here, a purpose-built library in 1897. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Justina. Uh, this is Little Mouse. Uh, it's run by myself and Gareth, my partner. Uh, we started uh, during lockdown. Uh, we're cheesemongers who specialise in British and Irish artisan cheeses as well as wine and crackers and all things nice. One of the things that we love about having a business here is the amazing like community support that we have. Um, that was one of the things that made us confident to start a business here. Uh, so doing a little bit of research into the history of the building and the businesses that were here before. Um, it seems like there was a clockmakers from 1900s, then they were an optician and a jewellers, but it seemed like it was a family business. Um, and then as the history sort of developed and as people started remembering who was here, we found out various different things about it. Um, that there was a pet shop, which we discovered when we uncovered the beautiful signage, which we've kept um, as a little memento of what was here before. Um, and it's really actually lovely to get people's memories of uh, what's happened and what businesses were here before. Phone calls nine o'clock in the morning from people that have been contacted just to say, I've just remembered this shop was next door to so and so's, or so and so's turned into this other shop. I've remembered going to this shop. I got my first pet from El um, Elfin's pet stores. I bought my first dog from pe Elfin pet stores. Really sort of inspired people to dig back deeper into their, their own memories. The Polytechnic building was named after Samuel Coleridge Taylor because he was a local boy, he lived a lot of his life in Croydon, most of his life in Croydon, and a lot of his life in South Norwood. He had a connections with the Stanley Halls, he was a protégé of William Stanley himself as a young composer, like young musician. Samuel Coleridge Taylor, what a gorgeous picture. Of course, what's important about this, it was on this step that Ethel Fennings used to stand, yeah. um, uh, talking about the struggle for the women getting the vote for the um, um, suffragists that were in the area. And, and in fact, we're going to have the two plaques that we're putting up, one to Mary Pearson, and, who was a suffragette, she was imprisoned, the other one to Ethel Fennings and her sisters. They're going to go on this elevation here. Uh, I mean, they're being constructed, they're being manufactured as, as we speak. The interesting thing about the clock is that when the, the community of South Norwood, led by Francis William Mark King, who at one time was one of Stanley's neighbours, decided on the clock project, um, what was it going to be constructed of? And as I say, they couldn't use brick and they couldn't use stone on this site because of the foundations. I mean, the clock is four tonnes. It was made by Giddett and Johnson's of, of Croydon. Um, and it's the idea for this cast iron clock came from the one outside Victoria Station. Hi, my name is Mo. I am the Learning and Engagement Manager here at Stanley Arts. I look after lots of our community and family programming, which gets people into the building, interested in the things that we do, accessing heritage and getting involved. I was attracted to the role here at Stanley Arts because I live locally. I really wanted to get involved in the community and I've been walking past this building, thought it looked amazing and just wanted to get inside. Uh, Stanley Arts was founded by William and Eliza Stanley um, 120 years ago and they really wanted to bring a place to South Norwood that was inclusive and open to everybody and that's a legacy that we've really tried to continue. What's interesting about what Stanley does here is that he knew about the treacherous South Norwood soil and so the foundations of these halls are on, well they're, they're 14 feet down on a bed of concrete and Stanley said that these halls will last a thousand years. 